Welcome to Moonbase 2. And welcome to the Moonbase 2 podcast. My name is Andy, Corporal Commander at TFW, and I'm joined this week by the overheated sleepy boy himself. It's Mikey G. Wolfie 3. Hello, Mikey. It is very warm still. It is. I hate it. <laughs> Every facet of summer I hate. Pollen, bugs, and insects. Not because I fear them, but because they fly into my house and annoy me. And heat. They fly in, sit there staring at you. No, they fly and then buzz around, and then kind of, for some reason, why, why, why do bugs have the need to start flying at your face? While screaming, hey, listen. Yeah. Hey, why? Listen. Why is that a thing? Hey, listen. Why? Why are you doing this to me? You're just making me want to kill you. <laughs> I don't know. They just don't want to live, I suppose. And they're really hard to kill. They're such a pain. How are you doing, mm. though, Mikey? How are you doing I'm, this week? I'm all right. Busy week. Good. Uh, that was happened to you. Ooh, busy week. Good busy or bad busy? Just busy. Oh, fair, fair play, fair play. That's okay. Uh, we are not busy in the world of Transformers news day, I will, I will say that. That's a that's mm. a little a little thing that we call a spoiler here on the podcast. <laughs> oh, oh boy. God. Oh, yeah. There is not a lot to talk about this week, but maybe we'll manage to mine out some fun and entertainment for you, the listeners. We're going to mm. start off with uh, crappy, maybe not crappy, because I saw a lot of people like. Oddly enough, kind of happy about this. So kind of, <laughs> kind of uh, like Jones in for it. It's the GameStop uh, exclusive Transformers G1, because of course it is. Megatron, mm. Mega, uh, Modern Icons Replica Helmet. We talked about the Optimus Prime one, um, however many months ago that came out. Did we? Now there's a Megatron one, because of course there is. So it's officially licensed by Hasbro, so that's apparently mm. a selling point. These are these are the bullet points that they talk about. Uh, GameStop exclusive product, so GameStop, baby. It's a premium collectible wearable helmet inspired by Megatron from Transformers. Not any of the other Transform, not any of the other things that Megatron's known from. <laughs> you know, the vast swaths of Megatron usage. Mm. Uh, electronic collectible helmet with LED light up eyes and authentic Megatron voice uh, voice phrases and sounds. Uh, though it doesn't actually list who's voicing it. Uh, I think we can assume Frank Welker, but it doesn't say that it's Frank Welker doing it. Mm. But it, it it probably is. I think that's. I think it's okay to assume that. I mean, I wouldn't make assumptions quite just yet because how that's a hundred dollar helmet, right? Um, Could yes, they hundred hundred nine dollars. I mean, I just based on how much it costs sometimes to get the voice actors and everything, I could see it being like old phrases from tv shows but maybe not necessarily like if it was new recordings i'm not necessarily sure it'd be frank oh you think they just ripped the lines from a from an episode well they could rip them or archive. i could see it being um oh what's his name um uh, sassy, Me- S- sassy, Me- sassy megatron um sassy megatron yeah who plays him what was what was sassy megatron from because uh, i recognize the name the uh, jason marnocha Oh, where was was what was he from? Sassy Megatron one? was pri- was um the Prime Wars. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the one yeah, good, like, the one good thing about that entire experience, like we say, doesn't really say who it is, but it no. says Megatron lines or f- sounds mm. and phrases. Uh, there's also push buttons to activation. Cool. Uh, detail paint and battle damage for a real world feel as much as a giant robot head on a humanoid body mm. uh, can feel real I suppose is fully wearable helmet which is useful oh, I'm gonna see <laughs> <laughs> fully wearable helmet if it wasn't it would be slightly worrisome I thought that was strange I thought it was strange to mention that was a feature but hey uh, whatever right um it comes with adjustable straps mm-hmm. uh, for best fit for most adult heads. Uh, or most adult-sized heads, head sizes. Mm. Unless you've got a massive head or a tiny head, I suppose. Detailed interior sculpting and design. Uh, okay. Uh, and then it has. Uh, it requires three AA batteries to get it rocking. It's coming out in August on the 13th of August. Oh, my. And like we mentioned, uh, basically, we'll just round it up by one cent to $110. Mikey, do you not want one of these so you can pop this on your head and sit in your chair and when someone tries to come and ask you to do something, you can just have your eyes light up at them? 
As in, no. I, I really hope they have something to deflect that light away from your actual eyes. Yeah, I think we said that about the Prime one as well, <laughs> didn't we? Um, I mean, I like the interior, oddly enough. It's weird that they do that, because it serves no purpose, but it is yeah. nice. And just imagine how sweaty it would get in there. Ah, uh, it's going to get moist. Uh, I wonder how moist. comfortable this, these things are, because it ah. doesn't look like there's any... Like no. padding. It just looks that's... like it's hard plastic. Uh, yeah, I don't... Like, none of these things are comfortable anyway, but I don't... Like, I like how they will not show the model with his head. They will not show the, the model's head at all. He must oh, only that's be true. Megatron. Yeah, um, because when he's taking it off, there are giant ma- uh, lines and gashes all over his face from it being on there for the photo shoot, probably. Yeah. Um... I think if you're into this, well done. Um, I well done. <laughs> what yeah. do you mean, well done? Well done. Um, Good job. You like a thing. <laughs> not enthused. Okay. And I'm looking at the Optimus one now, and I'm I'm not enthused. Reminding myself that existed either. Uh, f- I don't know. This is just like you'll you'll wear this once and then stick it on a shelf and have Mer- and like Megatron glaring down at you all the time. Like could be amusing. Especially if you, like, put it on your ceiling and your girlfriend's there and you're getting intimate and she's just like, he's looking at me. Megatron watches. He sees all. Could, could what if one it? of the lines is, Megatron attack? <laughs> <laughs> and then it does the G2. <laughs> oh, no, no, even worse. Even worse. Like, again, in the context of you're there with your lady or your boyfriend, however it's going, and then you just hear from the background, why throw away your life so recklessly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it could happen i did see someone put up an image of like um the the transformer helmets through 2000 and what five when the first transformers movie came out the Mm -hmm. uh, the live action one till now and they have improved i suppose they have definitely improved um low bar and clearly there's a market for them because they keep making these things so hey ho that's something. Where's the Bumblebee one? I'm sure someone's asking. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm, I'd say Soundwave is probably more on people's minds. One would hope, but they do like doing Bumblebee stuff and Starscream. I think I think a Soundwave one would make sense. And then I could see them doing a Bumblebee. Excuse me. But then again, they might just leave it off at these two. Oh, yeah. Probably more likely, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, more than likely. It would be weird for them to, to keep going. Uh, I thought I'd save this story, though, for you, Mikey, because I thought yeah, this would uh, um, tickle your pickle yeah. if you want to take us on to third-party news. I've been stalked so much in the last two days with this. This I've been emailed. I have been DM'd. Nick Roach won't leave me alone. Are you telling this me one. that people know that you like Grimlock? And like, specifically IDW Grimlock? N- N- Nick was just like, I, 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 I responded to a tweet. He said, like, I was just writing a message to you! I was just about <laughs> to tag you! <laughs> just like, Nick, stop shouting! The children can hear! <laughs> Mikey, I'm sorry to tell you that the this this figure that we're going to talk about doesn't have the teeth uh, on the robot head. Oh no! And I know that's your favorite part of the Grimlock oh, design from my yeah. EW. So, I'm sorry. What are we talking about here? Uh, Planet X. Shut up, by the way. Planet X, <laughs> Planet X uh, have revealed PXC04 Caucus. Now this is they they teased this way back at the start of January 2020. Um, but only as like, and I'd completely forgotten about it. This is IDW Grimlock, specifically uh, based on the coloration Maximum Dinobots Grimlock. Mm. Um, so this is the very stylized design that Nick came up with back in the day. Um, debut in Maximum Dinobots uh, was modified a bit for Morden Meets the Eye, but where he was a semi-regular character. Um, How long ago was Maximum Dinobots out of interest? Because you you might remember that. Two thousand eight, because it was oh, crossing God. over with All Hill. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it, mm. it's been a long time since... Well, I mean, this design's never been done, but it's the first time since, I guess, 2008 it's been used, right? Uh, yeah, like, Morden Meets the Eye used to obviously use this one, but, like, this is the... Alex made a lot of modifications, especially to the color scheme. Mm. Um, so, yeah, this is Nick's original take on the character. So, this is a highly stylized, sort of more anime, bulked-out super robot version of Grimlock. Um... His head is being compared to Batman, <laughs> which I can kind of see. Is that just because he's got the ears? Is that, yeah, is that it's the ears. Okay. Um, and then he transforms into a Jurassic Park style T-Rex um, with the add-ons. Like he's got like elbow blades and he's got a weird handle in his tail uh, and such and such. Um, and a yeah. tongue. And a tongue. He has a little tongue. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, for people who are familiar with Grimlock, obviously this is who this is quite a departure from your standard G1 look. Um, 
some novelties here, which uh, this has been put up and they've been talking about colors and stuff. And Pl Planet X is looking for input and colors. Um, they're, the eyes are uh, light piped in both modes, but they're using amber instead of red or blue because in Maximum Dinobots, um, Bertram's, I believe it was, no, it was, um, it was Bertram and Joanne LaFuente. When they colored it, they didn't color his eyes red. They called them kind of an off orange. Okay, so they went with the amber. Yeah, but uh, they're and they're also going with red fists because Josh was very specific about wanting him to have red fists. Um, mm. But um, Planet X have, have been asking and they've been saying like we're, we're recognizing a lot of people want red eyes and black fists. Um, oh. So I could see an add-on kit for this or maybe it'll come out in different colors or maybe it'll be like more than meets the eye repaint or something like that. I kind of hope that, yeah, it, it's it's... I hope they don't go back on the design and make it that the primary version. I hope this is the primary version. Mm. And like you say, they give them the other parts as uh, as yeah. like extras or something, because it would be sad to see like Nick Roche's design just like change because people want it to be G1 Grimlock. And A it's bit like, more. but it's not. <laughs> no, like it's very specifically not. Um, yeah. Also, like I, I want it. I just want stupid repaints of this. Like, I did That's see nice. a good digibash of it into the the blue G two. Yeah, like that looks not... weirdly fantastic and looked better with this with this color layout. They did it in a more traditional color layout, and I don't think it mm. worked as well. Mm. Um, I'd like to like... see this in maybe the unreleased G two version, or I yeah. think even like a an actual Jurassic Park color scheme. Uh, yeah, like no, I one did, would look kind of neat. I think I did say that. I'll just like you know that that Rex looks very Rexy like. Yeah. It would, I mean, it, it it looks like like if, if no one's seen what that th this uh, toy looks like, mm. uh, you said it looks like Jurassic Park uh, Rexy. I would say it looks mm. like Jurassic Park Rexy if Jurassic Park was turned into a '90s cartoon show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly how I'd put it. I'm um, surprised we never got that. To be honest, we almost did. Did we? Is it like the Aliens cartoon that never yeah, happened? Yeah, um, there was a an adult orientated, uh, like a teenage adult orientated uh, cartoon. It made it into the storyboarding stage, but they never got it off the ground. Oh, okay. So technically, so, I suppose the Aliens cartoon got a little bit further since they had mm. at least a, a pilot teaser yep, shot, then, which you can find on YouTube if you don't know. Basic idea was they were going to go back to the island and sort of try and resurrect the park while also doing like nature studies. I mean, that makes sense. It sounds mm. like you could do something with that. I'm guessing mm. they'd get cut off from civilization and then they'd have to almost do a Jumanji yeah. cartoon and get back to civilization. Yeah, and like the um, they were going to have like a pet Pteranodon and Rexy was going to be like recurring antagonist and it's usual stuff. No, that doesn't um, sound terrible. No, it, I, would, I was curious when I saw it was like aimed at older audiences. I'm just because I like that was at the time when you were getting the Free Willy cartoon where Willy could talk. Oh fuck! I forgot about that. That was that was because a thing. <laughs> the Native American shaman communes with him, which is oh. very awkward. <laughs> mm. But um, yeah, anyway, so this guy, accessory wise, he comes with a sword and a gun. Uh, he's highly, highly posable. Yeah, um, he's got tons of posability, and looks like he's got like in Dyna mode. He's taking some. Some people thought he was like a retool of Vulcan, but like the no, 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 no. no. But I he's mean, taking... he's, he's a T Rex, and Vulcan's yeah. a T Rex, so. They're the same. Yeah, I it guess. looks like he's got uh, head articulation, and he's got way more tail articulation than Vulcan. He's got up and down as well as side to side. Which what do you mean when you thing. say head articulation? Well, it looks like his head in some shots is like turned to the left and right, which is something mm. I really appreciate when you do a, a dinosaur mode. It um, looks like if it does, it's minor. Like, minor. It's not like he, it, I. I think he's for example for again for people who might not know, it doesn't look mm. like he's as poseable as say Kingdom uh, Megatron. T-Rex mode yeah, where no, you can no, actually turn the head. Kingdom Megatron 1 really takes advantage of being an arm. But like Vulcan I, looks more poseable in some shots, but yeah. um, he ended up being like surprisingly head poseable when I got him. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, um, they've also vaguely hinted at the fact they might have the other Dinobots in the line. Do you think it's one of those things where it's like, we have them in the wings, but we need to see how this Grimlock does? I could see if this guy doesn't sell well that they'll 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 probably they'll glacier uh, lords them. yeah yeah basically <laughs> basically um so i am ecstatic about this i am like i love this design this is in my opinion the best grimlock design uh it's from a comic that i liked a lot at the time that didn't age well but i liked a lot of the time and still has some <laughs> fantastic art um for the time it wasn't too bad i suppose no but boy did that story not age well no oh well you know grimlock <laughs> uses too many syllables no one on earth uses that many syllables in a sentence was it Furman that wrote it yeah 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you said syllables, I was like, oh, Simon Furman? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're not as, like, hyped on this version of the character as I am, but what do you think of the toy? Yeah, I'm not a Grimlopian. Is that what you call yourselves, Grimlopians? <laughs> we, we have many names. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is a really good representation of that character. Uh, I'm not mm. a big Grimlock dude to begin with. He's not a Decepticon, so his coolness factor drops by it a lot. Kind of is sometimes. 90 points. Well, yeah, but he's, he didn't have a Decepticon color scheme, so... <laughs> He's, he's need, got he's got heroic colors. They so. need to be either evil looking or lord. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you know it. Um, but it looks like a great toy, and I've only heard positive things about Planet X. And you've got the um, yeah, Vulcan, the, the Vulcan, and you've said great things about the Vulcan mm. as well. So, I mean, as soon as I saw this, I went, "Well, Mikey's happy. He's not." Oh, I've got. I'm getting a, a bit, pre-order hopefully. in as soon as um, someone local gets it. Uh, what are we assuming? Do we know the price? Or are we assuming yeah, the price? Yeah, well, TF Source, because it turns out this guy is fucking huge. How big is he compared to Vulcan then? Same uh, size? He, no. Uh, they've confirmed. No. Vulcan's like a decent Voy- like Voyager to Ultra, the old Voyager to Ultra scale. Oh, uh, yeah, they've yeah. confirmed this guy is going to be bigger than their dead source. How big was, was he? He was Masterpiece scale. Oh, no. Uh, and they've, <laughs> so they've, how big they've, is this they've guy? Es- they've estimated that like MP44 will probably come up above his elbow, between his elbow and his shoulder. Uh, how big was... Uh, w- which one was MP44? Uh, Optimus. Oh, uh, the newest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy's going to be big. Yeah, um, okay. At, like, wow. at least leader scale. Um, so he's definitely going to be more than Vulcan, I guess we can assume, right? Uh, he's 170 dollars. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, wasn't Vulcan like 120, 150? Yeah, yeah. That's, I paid 120 for mine. Hmm, wow, okay. Um, which, I'll be honest, like, considering what you'd have to pay to get a masterpiece scale figure in the official American, <laughs> I, I think that's actually a really, I, I think that's a good price. It's and not it's awful. not, it's not a fucking derivative G1 design again. No, no. So, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I mean, it is G1 colors and, you know, he will it fit on a the G- shelf with other you know. ones, but, you know, oh, fuck it, 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 it does he, look fucking different from other like i found a picture of someone's uh, grimlock collection and i'm like mm. well it's gonna look really fucking different compared yeah. to all of these grimlocks thank god yeah T- listen i have an entire shelf of grimlocks and they're just like there's just gonna be this guy sitting in the middle of them like yeah i've yeah. got more grimlocks than that but you this person is a weakling um <laughs> i mean i think the nicest thing about the grimlock design here is uh all the smooth edges like he's not angular at all he's all like curves oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's, like, very, very different, and I really, yeah. really like it. I, like, one of the things, like, that comes from the fact, like, I remember Nick saying this, he wa- he wanted the dynamos to look like animals. Yeah, so yeah. You, you can't have job. sharp angles or anything like that. You have to make mm. it smooth and rounded, and it translated into, like, the semi-muscular robot modes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's really cool. Um, I'm, I'm ecstatic, to be honest. It'd be interesting to see if they, because you've got the basic shape there, if you re-textured uh, the metal parts away and gave mm. it try try to give it a skin look to it. How well would that transfer over? Yeah. To a, uh, could you make this into Beast Wars Grimlock, uh, basically? Yeah. Or like that'd be interesting. I, d- I don't think you could, but it'd be interesting yeah. to see if it's possible. I mean, I'm just gonna say I say this about every Grimlock that's made, but please retool it into Goryu. Oh, that's never gonna happen, Mikey. I know, but I want it. Oh my god. Gory I remember when they Shattered Glass did a Goryu in the um comic. <laughs> All right. And okay. they used MP Grimlock as the base and I was so annoyed. <laughs> Just like, oh. why won't you make this? Uh, cuz the Dino Force don't exist. Yes. Ugh, then, then the one time the bloody third party tried to do it they wa- they made those terrible shells. This is the most annoying thing because it's like if you the, these are, <laughs> don't well I don't do G one. What we really mean is do the G one that you never touch. Yeah. Either the toy exclusive ones that you never fucking touch, or the yep. Japanese ones which you you don't want to touch with a barge pole. Yeah. Like they 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 might dip their toe into ah oh, well we haven't done one of sizzle you know a spark bar we might mm. do a sizzle. They ain't touching the Dino Force. Maybe we'll do Star Saber. Maybe we'll do Star Saber. Desaurus, get the fuck on the boat. Breast Force? No. Don't know who they... Who are they? <laughs> they got boobs in their name. Get out of here. Get out of here. Death Cobra? That's Death a violent Cobra. name. Oh, don't. You're making me sad. Yeah, it would be fun I for Death, Death Cobra. I love Death Cobra. 
for for his one episode. <laughs> Dead Cobra's amazing. His name is Dead Cobra. He's a helicopter and he dies. He did yeah, straight up spoilers. <laughs> ho ho. Um, I guess the the one thing I'm not a big fan of is I don't like the look of his sword, which is a really petty thing to say. Yeah, uh, I'm little... not a big fan of the mm. red. The red's really vibrant, uh, mm. and the the actual sword sword part of it, the energy sword part of it, to me looks like a calypso. Which, for those not aware, is a ice <laughs> lollipop in the UK, which is I can't, orange un- I can't see that now, but you're right. I think you're right about the hands, especially because they've gone for quite a metallic look in the rest of them. Yeah, uh, versus the sword hilt, which is mm, just mm, mm. it seems like a flat red. Maybe maybe that's what you could do. Maybe tone down the the sword hilt, mm. do something with that. That's that's the only thing I would really change on it. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. And he's got pose like just like posability wise, he's got waist he's got ab crunch he's got side to side he's got posable hands yeah he's got ankles uh-huh. yep. um he, like i'm just scrolling through he has literally every joint you can think he needs um, yeah oh but we don't see one thing mikey what he's got what ankle tilt see? in rex mode <laughs> what don't we see though mikey uh we don't see what's the most obvious pose that he isn't doing oh no no andy yeah do you know what no do it as a t-rex <laughs> You can pull it off as a T-Rex. <laughs> yeah, if he could do the Iron Man pose as a T-Rex, that would be amazing. <laughs> I'd love that. That never happened. I'm not I'm not sure how that would even I I can't even conceive how that would work. His ass stuck straight up in the air. It would be the only with, way. With one ha- with like one finger touching the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, like ass yeah, I uh this guy that due out I think in like August September time. Oh, okay, well, that should be enough time for you to save up, I would think, right? Yeah, Hopefully. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try and get the money together in the next couple of weeks. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, no, this guy's fuck everyone else. This guy's coming in one way or the other. Yeah, yeah, uh, good stuff. And maybe then Nick will leave me alone. Oh, Mikey, stop is yelling at me, that, Nick. Is is it not you that started this with him? No, no. Who contacted who first back in the day? You, I. I was made by a guy at a convention to ask him a question because no one was asking him a question because they were all too nervous. Who made you? Ravage. Remember Kitty? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, 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 he was just like, talk, say something. Everyone's a bit nervous and won't say anything. I had to do it. And they're like, are you G Wolfie too? We're just like slowly sinking down <laughs> into the chair. Leave me alone! Man, I wish I could have gone back in time so I could just <laughs> scream, lame, when you answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, well, there you go. Yeah, so oh, it's, so it's, it's not your fault. You're basically shirking responsibility. That's okay. I am placing blame where it lies. That's fair. All right, that's okay. <laughs> uh, shall I take us on, Mr. Mikey? Uh, yes. Did we talk about Banana Force uncolored versions of their MPL-04 Great Beast Tour? I don't Or is this think the first time? So, this is the first, because I didn't recognize this when this came up. I think you're right, but I'm. I, that's why I asked because I was like, maybe we did because I know we have talked about Banana Force's stuff in the past. I remember yes. because it has a silly um, name. I don't yep, remember because what they we did talked about, but... R.I.D. Optimus and they did. I believe oh, wow. they did Ultra Magnus as well. And I'll take your word. Die right. Atlas as well. I think was the other one. Was it? Oh, okay. I'm gonna uh, double check that. Well, yeah, they're doing an Optimus Prime. Uh, would you believe me, Mikey, if I said he's G1 esque, sort of. I like to think we're all G1-esque. He's G1-esque with weird proportions that is almost kind of similar to the um, Optimus Prime comic uh, from IDW kind of anime proportions. Yeah, he's definitely IDW inspired because no no other version of that character has those back wings. Yeah, and yeah, and then like you say, he has uh, back wings, which are I maybe if you want to not go with the IDW esque design from, then you can say um, God Bomber. Mm, but mm. it's it's weird. It looks really out of place uh, that he has those wings on. Maybe it would be a little bit better if they weren't colored red. I think it's the fact they move that kind of throws me off. And yeah, it's also they, weird. They did a, a, a R.I.D. Optimus, which you could then change into like a vaguely more G1 look. Uh, they did a black repaint of that. Oh. They did Ultra Magnus and then they That's did Diatlas. Right. I don't think yeah. Diatlas got released yet, though. Because the when I remember when we talked about the the um, the Magnus combining onto the the, the prime that they did, mm. he had the biggest forearms, didn't he? Yes, he has the biggest forearms. That's right. Yeah. I, <laughs> as soon as I saw these forearms, you said that uh, RID. I went, oh, it's the giant forearms. Okay, I'm on board. I, I know what you're <laughs> talking about. Uh, remember, guys, these are non-transforming action masters. Oh, <laughs> you just do this to piss me off now. 
Uh, my sexuality is based on pissing you off, Mikey. Well, go Don't have a wank shame. and think about something else. No, that's because that the only way I get aroused is by thinking of how you're annoyed. <laughs> that's why I play these podcasts back. Uh, he's going to be made out of oh, God, ABS that's plus. Terrifying. <laughs> made out of ABS plastic and die cast, uh, which mm. I assume is in line with the rest of them. Yep. Uh, Great Bastor is a modern and stylized re- uh, rendition of G1 Optimus Prime. Modern? I'm not sure modern, but okay. Um, well, I mean, it's stylized. So it was by... do- it was done this year, uh, so I, yeah, I guess I mean, it's modern. It's it's sort of stylized of a recent design. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> While still recognizable as the heroic Autobot leader, uh, it features some new design elements, like two small wings on his back. Kind of like yeah, if you imagine the wings on um on a cherub, like they're far too small to do anything. That's yeah. how big these wings are. New, new design elements that you would think are new if you didn't read any of the fiction in the last fifteen years. Would you be shocked, Mikey, if I told you his chest opens up revealing the Lasers. Autobot Matrix of late Well, no, no, unfortunately. That would be a surprise. It has the Matrix in it. He's got a rifle, which is his classic ion blaster, basically. Uh, he's got a battle axe, which we've never seen from a G1 Optimus Prime before. And he's also got light up LEDs. Yeah. So, kind of standard fare, I would say. Yeah. Um, um, I look at this, I think, like a s- more... How would I put this? More anime-ish flame toys. Like, when you look at the, the flame toys... Um, Optimus, the, the big one, um, hmm. the the big not the, the not the model kit, the actual like action figure. It's like very similar in terms of proportions, but like the design is a lot more Akira Memia. Whereas yeah, this, you, this you is said more anime. I would say just done by a different anime studio. Yeah, like, yeah, that it's might like that might be one's Madhouse, better. one's Clamp. It's it's yeah. not one for one, but it's like that idea. Yeah, no, I actually yeah, yeah that's a better way of putting it. Um, mm. Like and like, there's a lot of surface detail in this guy and everything else. Um, yeah, which is again kind of. The standard fare when you when you're doing these kind of figures now, isn't it? It's not. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's overly detailed. It's not like no, um, no, like the one oh, from last fuck, week. What, yeah, what they call the um Jin the, Jin, the, Jin House Jin Jin House ones. I, I was thinking it's not Wei Zhong. It's the Chinese company Wei. that's doing the yeah. movie Optimus Prime and stuff. Whoever they are, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Those God. guys. It's not yeah. like it's not like that. It's not like way over the top crazy surface detail. Mm. But it is. It's more. It's like a um. The difference between, if you want to go down a Gundam route, is the difference between a high-grade Gundam and a master-grade Gundam in terms of surface detail. Extra lines and bits here and there just to jazz it up. Make mm. it jazzy. I realize um, I've, oh, like, because I, I passed my year anniversary in Gundam. Um, oh my god. And I realized, like, I have so many high grades, and I'm just like, I've only ever really bought one or two master grades, and I'm just like, yeah, why well, is it that, that I'm doing that? I'm just like, no, oh yeah! Know. Character yeah. variety interests me more in high grade. Yeah, because do you, do you like the main Gundam from a Gundam show, or do you like the weird side characters? The answer is I, I like I, the weird side characters. And I sometimes like the main Gundam, but they haven't done an updated version of the Crossbone in ten years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, and I've got to say this. Andy! Mikey! Mobile Suit Crossbone Dust, that manga that was running there for four years or something, which wrapped up there a year last year. Oh, okay. Right. I didn't know this which, was a thing. Okay. Yeah, so... Crossbone, since it had been going on, it came back as Ghost, and Ghost went into dust. Was <laughs> so that, Ghost that, is that's the one not where... how decaying works, yeah. Mike. <laughs> Ghost is the one where the Phantom comes from. The Phantom's the green one, isn't it? Yeah, the one okay. that's screaming. Um, <laughs> and uh, the dust is like I think timeline wise, it's on the same time scale or a little bit after Victory. Mm. Um, and like. The mobile suit there it's not a it's not a gundam it's like a hybrid of like leftover parts from other mobile suits um and there's a new there's like it, yeah and they've announced that like hey we just wrapped up our crossbone continuity and we're really sad about that so we're announcing a new crossbone story um mm-hmm. which is crossbone x11 i believe it's okay. called which is the final story of tobia the main character from the original series Huh, and okay. who has a who was in Ghost? He piloted the X Zero, the mm-hmm. grey one. Um, he was briefly in Dust, I believe. Um, he was a much more, like side character, but now he's like his final battle in another in a new Gundam, which looks suspiciously like the X One with a new antenna. Oh, so I'm just like, you know what? 
Okay, cool. <laughs> no, Go on, throw a, shame, a throw a high grade at me. I'll buy it. And it just like I love how, I love how Crossbone has such an influence that it, they literally can't just let it die. But it's they also will, are refusing to make a show of it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, does this mean that when they finish this manga, that they'll be uh, <laughs> will they be willing to do a manga? Uh, sorry, an anime of it. I mean, I doubt it. But... <laughs> no, what will probably happen is like, well, we're done with Crossbone. Anyway, on to Gundam Fa- Phantom slash Crossbone. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> because, like, as I, as I, as I mentioned before, like, they're now, like, 30 or 40 years past the original story, and oh the God. Crossbone is still fucking insanely powerful. <laughs> mm. It's still a superhero robot, and I love it. I love that there's, like, in the middle of Gundam, this super robot just came in and won't leave. <laughs> why, why, why is the Gundam X the weird, dirty, ginger stepchild of, of uh, the Gundam know. series? I don't know. I don't know. You definitely get that feeling, don't you? You do, and it's so weird, because it's so much better than Wing. Yeah. I mean, and I like, think the most representation it's had has been in, like, Bill Fighters, right? Yeah. Season one? Yeah, where they the, had the, the, the X-Mal. dude. Yeah. yeah. No, um, no, 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 not the X Mao, the, the one where it's like the, the gold haired champion had the. Oh, X3, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He had the. Uh... Yeah, I remember him. I remember him. And it's like, um, I don't even need a team. I'm that good. It's like, oh, maybe it's because you have like the, the, the X. And if we're going in terms of how powerful a Gundam is, maybe you just have mm. the most OP Gundam. I don't know. Yeah. Man. Like, Gundam, Gundams are. Gundam. I just. Crossbow is just hilarious to me. <laughs> just like, we love it. <laughs> But we don't want to admit because it's too. I you know what I would honestly say it is it's t- become too different. It's become too mm-hmm. much as like the look at the fucking phantom. Tell me, it, tell me the real so different. But then you look at the SD series, Mikey, and you can't really yeah. tell me that, oh, that yeah. lines up with uh with Gundam. No, yeah. but like they're not trying to say that's in the Universal Century. Oh well, that's true. That's fair. Uh, yeah. But like they're trying to say like I, they're trying to say like this glowing green screaming energy spewing monster is somehow in the same universe as the rx-78 and weaker than the turn a yeah because <laughs> God. yeah the turn a exists as well let's go to that as well literal robot god yes <laughs> who has wiped out civilizations multiple times mm-hmm. but we're going to say gundam is grounded <laughs> Sometimes it is. It's just rare, and it, it starts off as it, and then it gets. Yeah, hey, the, the most recent series show they did had alien space dogs. Which? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that was <laughs> that was built. Uh, yeah, that was, that was serious. That, that was a, that yeah. was a, a serious show for the most part. Was it? Yeah, that was that took itself very seriously. Alright. I, I know they just did Hathaway's Flash with the with the. The, the you know the stupidly big ones, but I don't. Oh know. yeah, I, I hate them. I hate the designs. I don't mind the. Is it the Zai? I think the Zai kind of works. The um, Penelope, I don't like at all. I don't like either of those. I mean, if mm. they the only ones I like are the the enemy ones. The the the, yeah. the, the beige one and the, the Mezzer, um, Mezzers. That's them. Yeah, I think yeah. they're really cool, but I hate the Gundam Gundams in it. I hate them. Uh, yeah, I could. If it was cheaper, I might consider the Zai for something. But the Penelope, I just. And then you take off all the Penelope parts, and it's just basically a new Gundam with a different color scheme. But it's huge mm-hmm. as well, unmanageably huge. <laughs> oh, like, uh, listen, I've got some unmanageably huge to talk about later. But oh my god! <laughs> oh. Yep. Uh, do you have anything? Megatron else to in the about... back. Why are you throwing your life away so recklessly? <laughs> uh, do you have anything else to say on Bastor, Mikey? Because um, I think we've covered I it. It is the standard. Was, I, I think he's nice enough. I I think the wings could have been done better, but I I think yeah. he looks fun. And from what I understand, Banana Force's stuff is really good quality. You know what we need from an Optimus Prime to make him interesting? We need like Shin Optimus Prime or oh, Getter don't say Optimus that. Prime. Bloody Dekiano will rise out of the floor. Yeah, but then at least we'll have like a god level Optimus Prime who's True. going to destroy the universe with like Mad- giant bat wings. Madoka Magica Optimus Prime. There, there we you go. go. It's, pre- it's something different, and it's an Optimus Prime to keep everybody happy. Yeah, uh, as I always say, at the, because I am a sucker at these. Events. Talk to me again when this guy's purple. But oh, um, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you want to take us on to deformation, Mikey? Deformation, yes, I do. So, de- deformation or deformation, I don't know how they say this one. Um, okay. Space masterpiece scale blaster with ram horn renders. So, oh this is a third party masterpiece G1 style. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, <laughs> blaster uh, with ram horn. Uh, we just see renders, we don't see anything else. Um, 
pretty bare basic bone stuff. Ram horn, lo like, it looks like they're going for like a quite broad ram horn. Um, like he's got, he's quite big, but it looks like he's got like terrible posability. Yeah, do you think he, you can flatten him down? It looks like I, you'll be able to I, flatten him down just a little bit at the very yeah. least through the transformation, which is neat. Yeah, I think so. I think the transformation like just looks clever. But um, yeah. Blaster, we just see uh, his. We see his all mode. We see him in robot mode. It looks like you can imagine Blaster looking like he'll come with the um, sound speakers for his hands, and he'll come with a slightly smiley head. Uh, looks like no Marvel head or no toy head. Which oh, some people that's a good point. Will yeah. lose their shit about, but um, mm -hmm. I can't get excited because what is this? Like the fifth blaster I rem remember off the top of my head. Uh, like, in terms of masterpiece ones, uh, I want to say that we we have seen other people, yeah, at least right like render them. Surely, I'm sure Third we've seen a few people do them. MP blaster. There must be few. I I do think as well that okay. So Keith's Fantasy Club uh, did oh, one God. definitely. Actually, oh, actually, they might be. They can't. That's be the only ones. one I found. That can't be true. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you're lying. But Keith it, Fantasy it, it, Club it, was my first genuine. I am so sad about this. Ah, uh, yeah. Because true. I really wanted Captain Shark. Yeah, yeah. I really wanted Captain Shark. He was very sharp. Yeah, but they made him. F they fucked him over. They did. It wasn't great. Oh, it's so. Oh God, I was so excited the day they announced that. I'm I'm still waiting for the day where third party people make Goldran. Oh my Neat. God. Or J De Fire Dag one. Fire. Oh, you could do Mike like. You, I, I, you could at least say like there's a there's a transformer thing you can do for Dag one, like because he's a he's a he was a retool the toy was a yeah. retool of what was the shuttle from Star Saber wasn't it? No, 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 from... that was uh, Thunder Dag one. Thunder Dag thinking of. Uh, but like you could do Thunder Dag one. Yeah, yeah, totally. Know, and, but like, I'm trying to think. What would you do for Goldran? Um, I don't think Goldran. I think no. I don't think Goldran had anything that was Transformers. Or did they have um, no, Gold... the Red Scorpionok? Uh, is that from my guy? Where was he from? Dran? No, I'm trying to remember. No, Goldran. I think um, Goldran was Scorpionok. Was it? Yeah, because um... I remember there was um, the the Red Scorpionok. There was the yeah. red version of Death Zorus, but that, I can't remember if they were the red same guys. show or different red guys. ones. Yeah, yeah, red yeah. Scorpionok. Yeah. Um Scorpionok was from this. Red Geist, I think, was Mike Gein. Um okay. yeah, because like anyone doesn't know, Goldran is a Brave series where like at the time a lot of Transformer toys were reused, but at this stage they were using a lot more original molds. Um yeah. really and, good series as well. Have, oh at least the toy wise. Like I have yeah, to Goldran the, the is what really little, good. What little I saw of the show, it was very weird. They were going like full comedy because they like the yeah. apparently from what I learned, like they thought the show the, the show especially after Guy uh Mike Gein, um hmm. and Jay Decker, which are which are seeing like, wow, these are really these are like the, the brave version of like Jetman in terms of like the tone they hit sometimes. <laughs> I, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Um so they did gold round and just like wacky samurai robot combines with Godzilla. Hmm. And annoying kid sidekicks. It's a shame because the designs are super cool. Yeah, you can get a, a, a motoroid kit of Goldran. Um, I'm a little cagey of it after my last motoroid experience, yeah. but yeah, I was gonna say is, it's a larger scale, so maybe we'll see. Um. Uh, but yeah, it's an awesome design. Um, hmm. So it would be, I'd love, I I would love third party just started like touching on brave and stuff like that. But the closest thing that you've got is um, the um, the mini plus stuff. That's the only mm. thing you get, and some of those are a bit on the the wonky side. I hear. yeah, same. None of them sound like they stand out. Unfortunately, no. Like oddly enough, the one that everyone seems to like is Go Gagger. Yeah, yeah, and that Go -Go. one's good. It's still got issues to it, but hmm. it's it's good. Because like that, that design is just fighting you in real life. Yeah. Oh god, yeah, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I'd still like to get Fire Dag one. Um, not yeah, first about Super Fire Dag one, but no. I'm not sure I'll be able to. I want. I'd love a, a good J Decker. I love nice. J Decker's design. Yeah. Um, and like I like Deckard as well, but like J Decker is just like so super robot, and he's so he he's very unusual in that J Decker looks so different from Deckard. Hmm. 
because of like completely different color scheme and everything else. So yeah, it was a really neat. He was um, the first uh, brave toy that I got when on eBay. I just randomly went, oh, "I'll buy this. It's cheap." Yeah. This was when the the South Korean ones were like, mm. oh, you could buy J Decker for like twenty quid post. Yeah, God, and I just mighty. randomly grabbed it and I was like, "This is neat." I don't really know what it is, but it's it's pretty fun to put together. <laughs> and then years later, I'm like, "Why didn't I buy the rest of them? I'm an idiot. I'm stupid." <laughs> I could be rich, rich. Yeah, I could have been rich. <laughs> it won not versions, which some people you, sold you, me. But... You bought uh, Lucky Draws. No, I think no. That was I got the Lucky Draws beforehand. I know, but my 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 thing is like you ain't <laughs> making any money off the Lucky Draws because they're, oh, they're no. they move like molasses. Oh, totally. Yeah, for good reason. <laughs> um, shall we move on, Mister Mikey? Unless you got anything? Else no, to I'm say good. About I'm good. That? All right, uh, is it me or is it you? It is me, because what the fuck is this? Oh, yeah, yeah, what is this, Mikey? <laughs> okay, so, if anyone doesn't know, Loot Crate is a service you should all avoid. Um, Boom. They never do anything nice. The best thing I think they ever did was, I think they did a deal for, like, some NECA turtle figures, and that's just insulting in and of itself. Mm. Um, lo- so, yeah, the Loot Crate subscription service has a- is doing a Transformers month for July. So this will include stuff like a t-shirt, a cup, a, maybe a comic. Maybe. Um, and usually there's something a little bit extra. So f- if you w- if before I tell you what is actually in this, um, this box is going live on the 6th, uh, uh, the 19th of the 6th. So yesterday, actually. Um, it's June, July. It's June's the 6th, isn't it? Yeah. So yesterday this went active. Um and will run until the 19th of July, and is going to cost $50, limited supply. Um, obviously, you can get a subscription and everything else. Um, and the big selling point for this is they are including a 5-inch stylized PVC Optimus Prime with three, count them, three points of articulation. Woo. And Andy. Mikey. I am one who is very vocal in his support of stylized takes on Transformers. It's true. You love it. I love it. I respect it. I always want it. When I say stylized, Mm -hmm. I kind of mean not fucking with the character creator kind of stylized. Well, I I think it is referencing something, to be fair. Is it? (laughs) Yes. What is it referencing, Andy? I would Um, like to know. Are you you taking the piss and don't know? No, I genuinely don't know what the... what is this referencing? Oh, I think this is referencing... Do you remember the weird proportions when it was shown of the Dreamwave Optimus Prime? I mean... Do you remember the the shot where it I, had oh, the, the oh, image? I remember. I remember how terrible that was, but... I, I mean, this is like somehow taking that and going insane. I... I... I mean, I've got no basis for it, but it, it, <laughs> it feels like someone went, you know what would be funny if we did if we did that drawing and actually brought it into reality. Yeah. Uh, with its actual proportions. <laughs> this is what he'd actually look like. Um, yeah. So for anyone who wants context, it's an Optimus Prime. He's pointing, he's standing on a block with an Autobot emblem. And essentially, we, like the re- reason I said character creator is like you go into a game and you blow up your arms, you make your waist tiny, you make your he- head small, and your feet big, and you look like a freak. That's the thing you can do. Mm. Um, and that's what they did with this. He has a normal-ish chest and arms, a tiny head, really weird, like really small pelvis and upper thighs with really large lower legs. And then he has, his midsection is essentially a stick. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And, and Yeah, and a really weirdly short gun. And from what I can tell, articulation is you rotate his head, you can rotate his hand, and you can rotate his other hand. Yeah, yeah. And That's I'm it. not even sure about those last two because those images are terrible. They are weird. What they've done with the images is they've got two images and overlaid them and played with the opacity. Yeah. And that's it. So it's not a really coherent image of what's really going on. Yeah. I, I, you know, what would have been nice, Mikey, if mm-hmm. with this uh, information that was released for this figure and these images, context was given. Yeah. Like, design con- intent. Usually, usually you don't <laughs> need context for an Optimus Prime. Like, the... Um, the uh the b- banana force one we don't yeah. need context for that it's their own design we can tell it's their own design yeah this is trying to reference something i hope <laughs> otherwise why 
And this is the question. God, there's a side on shot of it and it looks even weirder. Yeah, it's it's so it's such a why. Why? Why? <laughs> why? Why? I don't know why, Mikey. I don't know why. No. Ah, uh, dear. <laughs> well, for those who want to have another Optimus Prime for their collection, it's, yeah, it's, oh. an, it's an option. I if you're an Optimus unique. Prime completionist who has to have every version of a character, enjoy losing $50 for this thing. It see, it does seem like a lot for what you're getting. Uh, how yeah, big but, is it? Hey, uh, five inches, I believe. That's a lot for this, then. Oh, it hmm. seems a lot. It's PVC as well, so it's not even like made out of um, anything heavy. Why is it so much money? I mean, there's other stuff in the box as well. Like, there's t-shirts, there's going to be cups and stuff like that. Probably a hat. Yeah, but those things would be like five pounds to make them. All of those things probably. Like, yeah, but they're, this has they're the not loot expensive. Box. You're also paying for the subscription for a loot box where Ugh. you get other things. I have more garbage. I never garbage. understood the look the loot box thing. Never got it. I mean, I got it if it included anything of value. It like I used did, to work though, with it? someone who was like subscribed to it every and he he was so excited and he used to tell me what we get in the box and I would just be like Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So you got a PVC of something else. Cool. Yeah. And I had to, like, he's my boss, so I had to, like, really be polite and just like, uh huh. <laughs> yeah. I had to pretend like I gave a shit. <laughs> cool. Uh huh. And that would yeah. go on. And I'd just be nodding and it's like, oh, you, you got an overly priced t shirt. I wonder how many people actually like this thing. Or how many people I, are going to just get it for the memes? Because I can see people getting it for the memes. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, that I, makes sense. I, I can genuinely say I have not seen one person say they like it. It's, it's not probably one. like... I, I can't believe there's a... There's going to be some, as we oh, usually say on the like podcast. Like, the guy who designed it minority. probably liked it. I don't know. I hope I don't so. know if the guy that designed it liked it. I think... I, I, I gotta believe he's doing it because... The lad or lassie to, who designed trying to do it. Something, I hope so. Right? I hope they like this. Because otherwise, that's depressing. <laughs> I guess it depends. Was it what, was it something that they chose to do, or was it something that they were like someone told them, "We want an Optimus Prime statue. It has to look like this." And he's like, "No, please let me <laughs> let me do a normal one." And they're like, "No, <laughs> <laughs> no, we want <laughs> we want you to be really high off your face when designing it." No, as they're just injecting him full of drugs. <laughs> no, screaming four twenty. <laughs> no. Now design, design up to this prime. Ah! <laughs> My God, it's weird, man. It's so weird. Hey ho, there you go. Shall I take us on to the last bit of news, Mikey? Yadu, yadu. Yo, TFCon Baltimore is apparently this year. It seems in October uh, on the twenty second to the twenty fourth. David K is the voice actor who's been announced. Uh, you may know him from Jobby the Hong's videos and other things. <laughs> Exclusively from the works of Tommy Dahl. <laughs> <laughs> you should put that on his CV as a big selling point. There you go. But yeah, no, he's uh, he's Beast Wars Megatron, obviously, and he's mm. also uh, animated Optimus Prime, and he's done, he's done a few things. He's fairly Clank. well re- he's known. Clank. He is. Yes, he uh, he technically got work for Clank uh, recently, <laughs> as I hear the um uh what whatever the new Ratchet and Clank's meant mm. to be good. It looks pretty yeah! nice. I saw reviews were good. I recently um, played the Looks remake really of the first game. How was that? How was it uh, oh, to bad. go back to that? That oh. like because it was the re- it wasn't the first game, which is good. It was a remake, and it oh. was a bad remake. Oh, it had very bad writing. And who was the bad get- guy in the first game? Uh it was the 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 the, the hero guy. Oh, what was his name? Captain oh. something. Quatron, Quatron, something like that. Quan. The guy who was like such a ripoff of that stereotype at the time. He was basically the 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 what was his name? Zap um, Brannigan. Zap Brannigan. Yeah, I knew you were going for that. Yeah, <laughs> I th- I think uh, Ratchet and Clank really hit its own on. Th- it wasn't it three where Doctor Nefarious was the bad guy. I think so. Yeah, I think he's their best villain easily. He's oh so yeah, good. but he's in the, the gameplay in that was. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the gameplay in that one was just sublime as well. Mm, yeah, definitely. So hopefully this one's good. I will try it at some point, but... Uh, good luck getting a PS5. And I'm not sure I'm convinced to get a PS5 yet. Not yet. There's not enough... Like, they're... 
anything on there that I'd like is available on PS4 at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, you know. And I also, <laughs> I don't want to lose a kidney right now. No, I mean, it's not even just, oh, I'd like to spend the money on a PS5. It's also, can I even find it? Yeah, it sounds like I have it's a real to kill. pain to get it. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not in the market for one, and I won't be for a very long time. If I do ever get one, it'll be like the PS4, and I'll get it right near the end of its life cycle. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I I am um, I would like to pick it up at some point, but it will be a while. For what? Yet. Or is it just in general you'd like to have in it? Ge- I if I have a games console and eventually they'll start making PS4 games. And That's it, true. Yeah. And eventually as well like they'll remove it from the network so I won't be able to play like old games. Um <laughs> but uh, so I will I will pick it up at some point cuz I know Sony will release games I want to play. When? Um because it's the only game series that really does if i'm honest i'm still i'm still uh, waiting for them to announce games that i want to play <laughs> i'm still yeah, like but... e3 showed elden ring and everything else was just like no <laughs> nothing yeah, else was am... for me unfortunately listen my my main recommendation as a console player is never try to get in on the first generation of console games oh yeah i mean i like, learned that give it with, a while i guess like 360 i don't think i've ever bought a console on launch since the 360 I learned my lesson. They had nothing. They have Cameo, oh, and that was the only game I played on the on the 360 when it came out because I had no interest yeah, in playing yeah. uh, the King Kong movie game, and I had no interest in Gun, and had no interest in. Wait, was the King for... Kong movie game on Nintendo? On three... No, no, 360. On, on Xbox, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 360. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. Know I that. remember hand, handing out demo discs. It was my first job. I was handing out demo discs in de- game. They didn't teach me how to use the cash register. They just told me to hand out, to greet people. I say hello, give them game. Pretty much, they were, they were leaving the store. I was like, here, do you want a copy of King Kong? I would have slapped that shit out. Like, if I went back in time, I'd slap that shit out of my hand and say, no, fix yourself. <laughs> I wouldn't understand, but you know. Yeah, yeah like, on the Xbox. who was this strange, hideous man? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, that's all of the news, though, for the week, Mr. Mikey. It's all done. Boom. Mm. In and out. Uh, what have you been up to this week, Mikey? What have you done for fun, Ooh, son? A lot of busy stuff, but let's think about something relevant. Um, TV, why then, search? Uh, I, lots of stuff, I, I, lots of stuff ended this week. Um, so I, 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 I got some finales to talk about. Uh, back hour wrapped up. Okay. So, I, I, I said this on Twitter, and I think it's fair. It was like Darling in the Frank's light in terms of the feeling it left me with in the end because you, that you was... Mean, it never got that bad, but it was never that good either. It was I, because I was never as in love with it as I was with Frank's. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I'm not raging at the heavens and making excuses for it for, for weeks and weeks on end. Oh, okay, Be- like Darling in the Frank's, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is like, oh, this is just unsatisfying and dumb. <laughs> um... Does it leave off like, on like a, a season two's coming kind of thing? It it you could say it could go into season two, but it it's just I would be very it would be very strange if they did because they I think they hinted that everyone's living in a bloodstream. Oh, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but I think they hit they hinted that everyone is actually a midget. Oh, okay. Um, but it was um it it. it it was a fairly unsatisfying pair of fights, which brought back some characters for a brief spell. Uh, kind of wrapped things up very quickly in the end, and then did a and we're all leaving for a while ending. Hmm. And it still didn't really explain anything very well or in a satisfying way, and everything was felt rushed. Okay. And I, 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 I just like. Well, I liked this show. I liked it, but man, when it hit those points where I was just like, "Oh, okay," um, but like, you gotta get the ending right, guys. Yeah, yeah. You've gotta try and get the ending right, and you just didn't. Not, like, oh dear, I, I, I'm not like upset or annoyed by it or anyway. You just <laughs> fine, cool. Um, I wouldn't exactly say now. I'd recommend Back Hour to go. Like, oh my god, go find it. I won't see. You, you probably won't hate it, but. Man, did it drop the ball at the end. Mm. Um, 
Uh, 86, uh, episode 11. Uh, I think there's at least one more. They said next one's like a special, but I know there's a second season coming as well. Um, but I'm yeah. assuming it's going to 12 or 13 episodes. Uh, yeah, so this was another half and half story. Uh, this one was quite heavy after the, the tone of the last one. Um, quite low key at times as well in terms of actual events, but then it's got some good action in it as well. And we finally catch up with the major and we find out that she's not in the best political st- state after what she did. I was um, going to say, are they procrastinating with the story since after the, the episode where they kind of went off into the distance, it felt like that was the end of the show. Yeah. Um, from what I understand, um, the original story was a one volume entry into a competition. So it was intended to be just like, and this is the end of the story. Oh, wow. That makes um, sense. Whereas, um, it you know, people liked it and they said, like, could you make a whole series out of it? Yeah, I've got ideas. <laughs> um, so he built upon it. Um, so it, it basically ties up, like, if you look at it that way for a first season, it ties up the major story. It ends in a kind of a dark way that, I mean, I don't know how it goes forward, but I could, I don't think they will, without spoiling, follow through. But mm. I think they, the structure of the story is that considering how the major is in many ways the pov character you could follow through without having to to, to have a hero moment okay i do, like i said i don't think they will but i think you could and i don't think it would take away from the show but no i i liked it it was a an interesting episode i thought the the last scene was the best the last scene of the episode was the best um so i'm curious to see if next week is just like an intermission special or if it's the last episode but no, I liked it. Uh, Thunderbolt continuing on. I've, I've pretty much lost interest in that. I'm I'm just kind of oh. sticking around for the ending. Um, is, not it, even... is, it, is it still better than season two at least? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, because I lost interest in season two about ten episodes earlier. But okay. um, but yeah, it was it's fine. It's just like it's it's relying too much on its style now, and it it's trying to ape some stuff from season one, and I'm just like, okay, that worked. It kind of like Fla- Flash season two spent a lot of time trying to am- ape. The, the, the twists and turns of season one. And I I always thought, like, it's very strange you pull that and then you try to pull it again. Hmm. And it's the same thing here, but it's okay. Um, I finished Vivi, caught up on Vivi. Uh, How so far that, have you got? Because I, I, have, I haven't seen the latest episode. Yeah, I, seen I, have seen, I have seen the last episode. Oh, wow. Did uh, you enjoy? Not, yeah, it's all right. It's pretty good, isn't it? I'm not emotionally <laughs> not traumatized. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. ends in a way I wasn't expecting mm-hmm. pull something I was definitely not expecting I had a prediction about how this show would play out but yeah um, it's I, I may have said this once or twice it is phenomenally beautiful I I love how this show looks uh, the characters are engaging the story's emotional the action's very solid uh, the plot progression uh, goes at a good pace I think it is the best show of the season I think it's the best show of the year to be honest uh, that's not like ReZero. Um, I, I think like of a standalone new new product, like this is great. This is a great showing for the writer. It's a great, because like, he's never done a, a, a non-adaptation before. Mm. Um, it's a great showing for the animation studio. It makes me like really want to go back and check out some of the other stuff they've animated. Um, like they did Attack on Titan, like when people were really raving about the animation, but they did other stuff as well that I didn't lose interest in. Um, so <laughs> I need to, I want to check out some of those. But yeah, Vivi, um, highly recommended, highly recommended. Um, intelligent series. Uh, and for me, there's not much better praise. Um, just trying to go through, watched my sort of fluffy short stuff, so that was fun. And yeah, the last. Big anime thing. I'll leave that one to the end, actually. Um, watch Lucifer season five. Um, oh, oh, what made you go back to watch uh, Lucifer? Uh, well, I like I like Lucifer. It's it's weird for an adaptation in that it's it's a police drama that's also about psychology, um, and mm. not like DC comics. Like, oh God, stop being up your own arse. Um, and season <laughs> five part two got. I stopped season watching season five part one when I found out it was being um halved up. Mm. So like season t- five part two came out and. The, I watched the whole thing. And season part two is mostly about God and how God is a shitty fatter. Oh. Uh, nice. and, and that is the main focus. And it was really well done. I really like the, the dynamic between them and the interaction. Still fairly funny. And there's a few sad moments. And if you liked uh, the previous seasons, you'll like this. Uh, that is one thing I'll say about Lucifer. It's quality. Doesn't, like, if you got into it earlier on, your, the quality has not dropped. Um, so it's being steady. They've confirmed only one more season, which I think is very wise. 
Yeah, you uh, don't want to overblow a yeah. season. Especially how this happened too many times. Especially how this one ended because there's no way this would last for like two more years or three more years. Mm. So, um, but no. Um, I started trying to watch a few things today. I was going to start watching Infinity Train and I tried to start Fake Grand Order, um, but I got interrupted with one and I had my niece for the other. So I couldn't, like, I couldn't really get into either of them. So they're, they're up for the next week. And the last thing um, is uh, Dino Xenon wrapped up with episode 12, which is otherwise known as a big fight with an epilogue. Um, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the fight scene was great. Fight scenes, like, trigger, like, top-notch, really good dynamic stuff, great soundtrack. Um, based on what they've, how they've set up the characters, I think it was a fitting ending. Um, okay. Some surprises, like, I was very surprised what happened with the Eugenesis. Not what I predicted at all. Um, and Galma has a good, good sort of wrap-up of his narrative. Uh, also, there's a thing, like, towards the end, watch every frame if you're watching. Like, there is stuff going on in the background that people tweeted at me. I was just like, oh, I missed that. <laughs> Um, Knight and the second get a good, good, get some resolution as well. Um, and yeah, overall I liked it. I, I, I like the ending and I like this show. I, I don't think there's enough in this show in terms of my feelings that I want to talk about it in a, in a woo-woo or anything like that. Um, okay. but overall, Dino Zenon, when I started, I wasn't sure. When I realized what it was trying to be, I got into it a lot more. And past episode six, I like, I enjoy pretty much every episode past episode six. Um, there's a, one or two at the start I was a lot more sh- iffy on. It's not very plot driven. It's very focused on small events, and it that leads to a lot of flaws. Like it doesn't progress its narratives enough. Only one narrative gets taken to its full, well developed state. Like we don't learn enough about Dino Zenon's origins. We don't learn enough about the Eugenesis background, in my opinion. And the Eugenesis themselves are, are fairly flat villains. Um, yeah. But I like the various traumas involved. I like the fact that Yomagi's is really the smallest and most in- insignificant. Um, Which is weird because he's like the main character. Yeah, I mean, he's I, shown to be the. Main I, character. I'd argue he's a bit more like Titus in that he's the POV character. Hmm. Like, because for anyone who's like Final Fantasy X, you see the world from Titus' view. The story's about Yuna. Yeah. Um, I'd say the story's about Minami and, and Galma. Would be how I'd structure it. Oh, it should be about Galma, but his <laughs> stuff's really pushed to the side. Yeah, until like those last three or four episodes. Uh, um, I, I what, wouldn't even once say once they wrap three, up. I'd say two. I'd say three because I've seen the last one as well. Okay. No, so I'd say three because he's he's very central to the ending. Um, I, I meant the, the 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 episode that you've seen and the second last episode. Yeah, and I, episode ten as well. I'd say as well was about him. Um, or at least like his it was like his was a big big thing out of it. Um, but yeah, so like I will never say it's on the level of Gridman because Gridman is one of my favorite animes of all time. Um. I really did like it. It's one of those like it's a like B and I really liked B and A. B and A was not exceptional in its writing, but I really enjoyed it. Dino Zenon is not exceptional either, but it is very enjoyable. But it is not what you think it is going in, and like if you connect with that early on, it will work for you. If some anything about that t- that early start turns you off, like majorly, this show will be a slog for you. Um, so that is something to be aware of. They've confirmed that there is another project um, coming. Um, Gridman Universe, Gridman X Dino Xenon. So there's a crossover. We don't know if it's a movie or a series or OVA. I, I think it would be wise to do this as a movie. Mm. Because have plot, have everything else, but just play to your play to the strengths of what people want to see, which is they want to see Gridman, Grid Knight, and Dino Xenon in a fight together. I suppose it just, it depends on what they want to do with the crossover, yeah. doesn't it? Because it might have a, a grand, ambitious idea. Yeah, like, if you've got one, I know they said they didn't necessarily want to bring her back as is, but, like, involve Akane somehow, bring back the Yuto and the rest. Like, I'm not against that, but I think just for your, like, make it like Premiere. Premiere is not a deep narrative, but it's a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. Um play to strengths like you could like just go crazy with this it would be my my advice um i i mean project wise i'm apart from that the only thing i could see them doing um going forward would be giving grid knight his own series but i don't know if they'll do that i'd be surprised if they'll do that i'm not um, sure because of how his character is i'm not sure if he's strong enough to hold the show it's weird because he, he he's really good but he he's really good in the context of other people yeah, yeah, he needs to have a really strong supporting cast member like the um, 
the the girl to to help him through mm-hmm. since he's very stoic. Yeah. Um. So I, you know, you could do it if you got if you did it right. I would be totally up for it, but it it's definitely risky. Um, yeah. But like Dan is in on I as someone who is me, and I know other people have been up and other people are down, and Andy, you've been up and down with it, and you've had more lows than I have. I think yeah. it's I think it's worth involving with. It's not. Don't go into it expecting Gridman two, and I fortunately I never did. I I I was very I think it was very sensible of me never to expect him to hit to hit the heights because like when the, when you realize Akane wasn't going to be in it, like she 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 was too good <laughs> to be honest. She was too good a character, but I I I ended up really liking it. I don't think I'll get the Motoroid kit, which it turns out can transform, which I'm very surprised. Oh, really? Okay. Um. I of that to not. I really like the convention of the beast mode being the super mode, mm. like such a turnaround and from normal, which is such a simple one. Um, but I, I, I would like something from the show. Maybe we'll see what products come out over the years. But um, no, I liked it, and I probably I was planning to do a Gridman rewatch in the near future. I, t- I'll probably run it into a Dinozenon rewatch as well. Okay. Um, but no, I, I was ultimately happy with it. I think it's a a very solid B plus. Um. Following on from like an S tier game, S tier series, you know. So I, I, mm. I'm happy enough. Like we've seen so many sequels that were just so unbelievably atrocious, and if nothing else, it's friggin' gorgeous. <laughs> God, it is pretty, very pretty. Um, really wish Kai the Grid Knight was something else, but I've gotten past that. Um, what else? Uh. Oh God! Uh, nothing else. Media, media. Apart from the fact that they've revealed the design for Kamen Rider Revice. They have, yeah. Um, not exactly what I expected. <laughs> well, no, it's a pink, b- pink and blue T Rex man. <laughs> yeah, with a very big smile on his helmet. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it was very clever to use the sight of the T Rex heads for the bug eyes. Mm, mm. That was quite clever. I like. I have no idea what's going on with his secondary. Like, I have no oh, idea. Yeah, no. He looks like he's. What's, tr- it, what's it meant to be? I don't know. I think he's also dino themed, but fuck me knows. Um, Revice, it's really obvious, but this guy, like, he looks like a gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I like he's smiling. Well, he's got fangs, <laughs> which are kind of like Glasgow smile kind of thing. But um, uh, yeah, uh, there's not. I don't. Go Kaiju is getting a new movie. Is it? Mm. Mm. Okay, uh, for an anniversary show or something. T- Ten Go Kaiju. It's called. Oh, okay. The tenth anniversary. Yep. Um, oh, oh, that makes those sense. Those movies okay. tend to be actually halfway decent, so it might be worth checking out. Um, hmm. Yeah. So the only other thing of note is that I got my figure I standard machine draman or Mugen draman or whatever you want to call it in the post. Uh, that thing looks big from the images of. Oh my have of it. god! The box. I wasn't expecting that. It, the box is two to three times the size of War Greymon's. This thing's a must, like, I've seen pictures, I was very curious after I saw the size of the box, because I, I I haven't actually started building it, I just got the box, but, um, so when he's crouched down, he's, he's not, he's, like, bulky, but he's not huge. If you extend those legs, oh my god. This thing's a lot bigger than I was expecting it to be, which means I've got it for a good fecking price. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big boy. Um, I'm I'm definitely interested. It should be a relatively quick build because there's a lot of dark plastic which won't need lining or anything. And he mm. doesn't like you can add. There's lots of places to highlight, but he doesn't need a lot of highlights. Um, so I am definitely curious. I'm definitely looking forward to having to dig into him. Um, what little I've heard about him because I mostly avoided uh, reviews and stuff is that he's the best one in the line. Um, uh, oh, that's interesting. And I'll I, be interested to hear why. Yeah, I'm also like it's really weird he's in this line. It's really uh, Is strange. it because he's not like a, a main Digimon? Because he does seem like um, not one of the big main hero ones, as far as I know. Well, like, so the the other ones you've got are Wargreymon, Metal Gruomon, Imperial Dramon, and Gallantmon or Jupon, whichever one you want to call them, um, who's coming out in a few months. Um, those are the primary heroes from the first three seasons. Yeah, so yeah. you've got Wargreymon and Metal Gruomon from season one. Season two, you've got Imperial Dramon. Season three, you've got Jupon, Gallantmon. Um... Machine Dramon was one of the primary villains from the last quarter of season one. Mm. He does show up in the new one as like an alternate form for Metal Greymon. Like a rage form. Um, but I, maybe that's why, I think 
one of the reasons, apart from the fact that he's like a really, really popular design, he was the first Mega Digimon designed and released. Oh, really? Okay. The very first one. Um, before then, like, gr- like you didn't. Gray- Metal Greymon was like the the top tier Digimon. Hmm. And it's certainly fictionally, and like, all it never went past the ultimate level. And then they invented Mega and Machine Dramon. Like, I think that's one of the reasons he's made out of different ultimates. Like, he's got uh, Metal Greymon's arms, and I think he's got the jaws from someone else, and his knees are from Andromon, I think. Um, and such and such. So, he he's very significant to the franchise. And he is, by far, one of the most popular, like, villain designs they've ever had. Hmm. So, I could see it. It's just, like, it's so strange. Like, he's in there and not, like, Devimon. Like, because Devimon's stupidly popular. Or, or Myotismon. Like, I could see though, them doing that. But, like... I ain't complaining because like he's my favorite design of the the villains of Digimon, or right. Digimon Adventure anyway. Um, so is I because he's a Grimlock. I mean, there is a bit of that. I mean, he's a big <laughs> metal evil dragon made that shoots missiles from his boobs. So I mean, I I can't hate that, Andy. Sure, sure. I can't hate that. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to building him. But Jesus, you could live inside this box. Damn. <laughs> anyway, Andy, that's me done. What about you? Uh, I haven't done a huge amount. It's just uh, I haven't really watched anything Bob Earth's Mightiest Heroes, so just keep on going through that because that's still a good show. No, it's uh, not. It's terrible. got some problems here and there, <laughs> um, but still, yeah, it's like wow, it's a uh, shame, real shame, you know. Um, <laughs> apart from that, it's just been you know usual week. I did get a box today, which had in. Uh, the next in the uh, thirty-minute mission ninja robots. So it's Ooh, the, yeah. the white, blue, and black one. I got the upgrade kit for it as well because you know it's cheap, so why not? I'm tempted uh, to so... get the one that looks like a female version of um, the Alice Core Gundam. Pink one or the the purple one? Purple. Okay, so that's the one that's out this month, the the end of this month, beginning I... of next month, I think. Something like that. Yeah, I want to get that one as well. Looks neat. Mm. Um. Yeah, I, I like. There's a. Have you seen the kind of sorceress upgrade kit for as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can give it like a wizard thing. Yeah, mm. it looks pretty good. Uh, they're still great kits. It's it's the same as the samurai one, but with just different accessory parts to it. So I'm still very happy with it. I like the color scheme on it. Yeah, it's good. Uh, also, the came well. It didn't come with, but the main thing in the box was I got the uh, Master Grade Kyrios from Gundam Double O. Oh, the orange uh, one. The orange one, one that turned into a plane. Because I think. Um, Back in the day, the original Kyrios High Grade was probably the first Gundam kit I picked up, or mm. one of the first ones I got. Uh, and it was, it, I mean, it's a that was a very old kit. So this is a little bit better. Mm. Especially this is uh, after the Master Grade Barbatos, and that was very that was very good to put together. So I mm. haven't got too far through the Kyrios so far, but so far I've got the feet done, and I'm in the process of doing uh, both legs. Uh, and yeah, it's it's impressive. I'd like to get the dynamis uh, at some point and i know the virtue is coming out at some point in the future as well so i'd like to grab them mm. um but yeah there are some master grades that are good uh ones with personality behind them like the <laughs> the double ones um at least it's a shame that they don't do more i suppose but hey mm. me and mikey have complained about that enough i suppose yeah um <laughs> i also bought carrion carrion the... yeah have you heard of carrion mikey no computer game where you play a um amorphous blob like oh, monster oh no uh, you crawl on uh, you crawl on ceilings and stuff like that and you eat yeah, and you yeah, eat yeah, yeah 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 now, oh, yeah 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 now i remember yeah so i picked that up this weekend and i had a go of it on uh, yesterday on saturday it's hmm. fun i very much like getting uh, a human being and very 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 slowly dragging them towards me <laughs> while they're screaming and then i eat them it's delicious. It's fun. Uh, I'm I'm not sure like where because the, the it, it, there's no real story. It just kind of drops you in mm. and you just kind of go. Uh, but it's visually very impressive to see him kind of jiggle and wriggle about the place as he's moving, as he's like extending tentacles to go onto uh, different bits of wall to kind of fling himself around. And that's just by holding left and mm. right. You know, you're not like doing anything crazy. But the actual animation for it is pretty pretty funky. It's pretty nifty. Um, apart from that, I don't think I've really picked up anything new. Uh, just finished mm. off Resident Evil 2 Remake on stream, um, playing as Claire Redfield. Um, that was mm-hmm. fun. That was fun. Did you know that game has a lot of weird, like, sex mods or sexy mods for, for the characters? 
I knew Resident Evil 3 did, but I also know that Jill is seen as the sexiest anime animation video game girl of her time, so that didn't shock really? me. Really? Of the time? Yeah. People love Jill. She's alright. People love Jill. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like, there's a, uh, a, if you wanted, you could make the Sailor Moon Senshi <laughs> through Claire. So there's like, um, you know, Moon, Jupiter, Mars, all of those kind of costumes for, for, for Claire if you want to go down that route. For, right. I don't know, for, for weird reasons. And there, there are other ones as well, because, you know, why, why not? I guess the people that play Resident Evil are super horny. I mean... Oh, yeah, Demetrius. you? Yeah. Yeah, Demetrius. Like, yeah, I kind of yeah. answered it myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, well, there we go. I guess the people who play Resident Evil are just generally super horny and can mod pretty well. Maybe it's really easy to mod for the game as well. Maybe that's a thing. I don't mm, know. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I think that's basically yeah. it. I did uh, think again, of I did think right. of one other thing. I, I that's I did that was worth talking about or watched. Oh, um, I watched the first episode of the Arcadum uh, VTuber campaign. Oh yeah, how long was it in total? Uh, two and a half hours, I think, there thereabouts. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, that's that's a. Did they actually get into it, or was no, it just like this setup was, stuff? This was interesting because, like, so this is the eighty-five session one. So this is going to go on for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um. So they decided to do like usually these start with everyone needs to meet up with one guy in a building and be told to go on a mission. And then hmm. develop a dynamic after that. So this was very different. It was just like everyone arrives at a town bumps into each other randomly, no one really has to make friends yet, and they it ends they're all about to go to a festival in the same general area. Hmm, okay. Um so a very natural meetup. I I liked it a lot better than a lot of the ways I've seen D D opening start. Um so I, I kinda I suppose like when you have that much time you don't you know you don't have to get into it. Um but yeah, no, they've I, got a two year campaign or something, yeah. don't they? So yeah. yeah you can you can go at a bit of a normal pace. Honestly I really liked it. I was surprised by how yeah, like the, I I don't I I I enjoy like when they have a lot of fun with it, but like I find some of the the his groups like too many people are trying to be parodies of someone, mm. and playing up. What do you mean? Well, what like there's parodies? one like there's Nick one Cage who, or something. Yeah, there's one in there who like his his character is Machizio Man or something. Man Ma- Machizio Manis, and it's Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, okay. and he, the entire time he's talking like this. And, oh yeah, and I'm just like. Mm. Okay, and there's another one who's like a parody of the Joker, and there's a lot of stuff like that, and oh, I find no. that really tiring. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's like, yeah. okay, you're not, you're just trying to perform to a type. And like, I like one thing I liked about like the VTuber and the cosplay groups is that they made characters and they played as characters, mm. and they had fun and they were wacky and everything else. But like, they got into the characters and made them their own things. They didn't try to imitate anyone else. Um, yeah. And this was very much like that. And like, there's some really fun bits. Like, really surprised by fruits. Like complete dedication to it. <laughs> she's really, oh, yeah, okay. she's really good in this. And like fruits, one I've watched, but I don't watch a lot. Like she's, she's perfectly ha- ha- nice and mild and fairly wholesomely perverted, like everyone else in the world. But she, she sure. was really good at this. On, on, on all honesty, and like they were all very good actually. I really like Vebe's character. Hmm. Um. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. Na- I just really enjoyed the narrative. Um. And there was a funny bit where Arcadum left and Vebe turned into an impersonation of a, a long-time D&D player who was complaining about VTubers and sex, which went on for oh. about five minutes <laughs> of her talking like this, complaining about D&D and having to go home and have a wank in the basement. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was just like, that girl don't give no shits. Um, no, she didn't care. <laughs> but no, I enjoyed it. And Nanners was very fun because Nanners basically played that person who's too cool for school no matter the situation. Yeah, I I remember she said she didn't want to play the the degenerate because that's yeah. who she is. Yeah, so she wants to play as a someone like yeah. cool and refined and mature. And but it's it, like, oh bless. It was like, <laughs> oh, she's refined and mature, and now she's saying something utterly ridiculous. But because she's saying it slowly and like vaguely mysteriously, are you supposed to laugh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which is fun. Um, <laughs> but no, I I really liked it. Like I've gotten into watching Arcadum stuff because like when you get into it, I think he tells good stories. Um, hmm. obviously it's very dependent on the group. Yeah, I mean, that's d d isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I would say if you like good narratives, it's worth checking out. And there's some, there's a really funny bit involving meat. And I won't spoil it. I thought else. you were going to say me as in you. And I was like, no. what? Yes, I'm there. I rise from the floor. Hello. You never know. Could happen. Stranger things, I suppose. But, yeah, yeah. um... 
yeah. So no, I I'd say just check that out if anyone's into D and D or wants uh, to see some good role play stuff. Oh my god! How often? Uh, how often do they do sessions? Uh, it is going to be every Friday, four p.m. Canadian Standard, I think. Oh, okay. So it's Fake about time. ten okay. o'clock here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So wow, wow, wow. There you go. There you go. Uh, is that it, Mikey? Yep. Uh, well, we do have a uh, message, at least from Christoph Carlson, mm-hmm. uh, from the Facebook page. He goes, you know, seeing uh, as So I'm a Spider, So What is ending soon, uh, it'd probably uh, be better to wait before going full spoilers on how fucked up, the, uh, fucked up as an adaptation it is. <laughs> uh, by the way, that was Julius, uh, Shun's elder brother who showed up on the battlefield, Andy. Oh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Jai told me there was there's still the time skip. Uh, but the, there's no way you'd know because there's no visual cues to really kind of force it to visually tell you. But I, I guess I just forgot. I got the impression I, I thought that the animation I thought the timelines was had bad. Ca- caught up. But oh, for this one as well. Oh yeah, no, I got the impression was bad. Oh no. Or at least for the most recent one, I don't know what, how often it airs. But... I'll, I'll need to. I'll need to watch it to be mm. horribly disappointed. I haven't because I've been watching Earth Mightiest Heroes. I've just put uh, all the anime on on a back grind. Mm. It's like. The only one that I was really into was Vivi. (laughs) And it's it's over. (laughs) Yeah, and I've only got one episode to watch for that, so it's like, "Eh, I can wait, I can wait. I can can save the good time, and then I've got the the other ones to go through as well. It's like, ugh. Um, You know the reason why he is behind shit right now? Um, I I don't. Uh, (laughs) Anyway, as the Fluffenhammer has been on hiatus, what are your thoughts on Age of Sigma 3, Andy? I'm kind of lukewarm on it, as I didn't get to play second ed much. Uh, for several reasons, mostly because it's not popular around here, and my Seraphon, which are lizard men if you weren't aware, finally got their upgrade. Uh, we were stuck in lockdown. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm more looking forward to giving uh, Atomic Mass Games, uh, which is the Marvel Crisis Protocol skirmish game, a try instead of having to relearn the AOS rules. Uh, that and after painting my 1,000... Oh, th- okay, you put down 1,000 instead of 1,000 in the word. But 1,000 suns in red and gold. I kind of want to paint a lot... Uh, paint an Iron Man. Oh, okay. So, Mikey, would you like to build and paint a little Hulk? Because you can later, dudes. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, Age of Sigma 3.0. Uh, I don't really know too much of the, the rules, because, um, again, I haven't had the opportunity to play. I didn't get to play much of 2.0. Uh, mainly because I never had a full army and I didn't mm. have enough time to go and see Gruff most of the time. Uh, in terms of what's in the box, I like the Stormcast Vindicators, I think they're called, because I want to use them uh, as conversions to make into Graveguard, since I don't like the current Graveguard models on the market, as they're very small since they're older. Um, I just need to make sure that these Vindicators can go on 25mm basis of their, you know, so they can be used as Graveguard, because that's the size basis that they need they need to go on. I don't really care for the Cruel Boys to own them, but I think they look neat. They're a nice, um, excuse me, um, sideward move from the the Orcs. And I like the idea that they are taking up the other mantle of Gorkamorka. Mm. Instead of being uh, brutally cunning, they're cunningly brutal. I like that aspect to them. The only thing I have a minor issue with is I think they look a little bit too similar uh, for my uh, for my liking, to the CGI orcs from The Hobbit. Uh, specifically, Mikey, do you remember the, the pale orcs second in command? Oh, yeah. They have that kind of look to them. Mm. Uh, they look better because they're not horrible CG monsters, but uh, uh, they're, they're, they've got that aspect to them. But it's not doing... Luckily, it doesn't do anything for me. I'll probably pick up the rule book at some point just because it'll be, it'll be a nice thing to have on the coffee table. Mm. Um... But I look forward to seeing what they do to the other armies because uh, I definitely think, like uh, specifically, the Night Haunt needs something because mm. they were shit in 2.0, and um, I'm hoping that 3.0 rules will help make them not shit. Not that shit, nice. you say? That would be nice. Uh, he goes on. These feelings did not stop me from getting the Dominion box, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, it had been uh, in between orcs. Oh, sorry, it had me at the in between orcs. Uh, I've been missing as well as more cooler Stormcast. Oh, well, there you go. So, Mikey, what about you? Do you want to get a little tiny Hulk to paint? I'm good. All right. Well, there you go. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, 
Do you have any questions, Mr. I Mikey? have uh, an email from a Mr. Jordan. Jordan. Oh. Jordan. Mm. Jordan. Uh, hello, philosophers and scientists of the Moonbase 2. Today I come oh, to so you Mikey. not with a question, but a, with a recommendation. I could see oh. you being a philosopher. I mean, you're incredibly cynical. But, um, That's true. <laughs> I've recently started a new job, which can be monotonous, and as such have the opportunity to listen to a backlog of Patreon episodes. You fool. Oh. Um, that said, I noticed during your reviews of Marvel Annihilation, you mentioned Marvel shows and how you, at least at the time, haven't seen them. Still haven't. Uh, given your feelings towards the Marvel films, I highly recommend you don't watch them. Both Falcon yeah. <laughs> and the Winter Soldier and WandaVision are almost great. Both touch on really interesting concepts and almost have a message to get across, but then face plant as they cross the finish line. The former has uh, a muddled plot that fails to properly articulate the show's themes, and the latter mm. devolves into a standard, standard Marvel action fair by the end. Uh, I hear WandaVision did a lot of like uh, playing with the audience's penis with like Mephisto references yeah. and stuff, and I'm... apparently the writer had no idea who Mephisto was, <laughs> so these references were put in by just members of the the the, the team. So hi. So they literally were just pulling your dick. Yeah, that, that, that as and, far as I know, I don't know that for sure. But... The writer didn't add the like, so the writer wrote no. stuff, and someone said like, "We want to put in Mephisto references." I don't know if it was exactly like that, but it was it was something along those lines because they'd never heard of Mephisto before, which is kind of weird that there are clearly there there as far as I heard, there were clearly Mephisto references. In yeah, there, but they and never like, did. I, did were, you hear that as well? Yeah, well, I know people were like, I were, used to see like loads of theory stuff about like in there Mephisto behind it all and all these hints yeah. saying Mephisto, Mephisto, Mephisto. Yeah. That's bizarre. Mm-hmm. That's really weird. Um... So, and it, blah, 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 blah. Uh, at the time of writing this message, Loki is far more interesting of the bunch of introducing cosmic concepts that potentially affect the whole franchise going forward. But uh, there's only one episode out at the time, so so time will tell. Hope I haven't wasted your time as my podcast listing has been sporadic as of late, and there may well this may very well be a redundant message. And I'm interrupting Andy on purpose now because it's funny, Andy. <laughs> Yes, you were I hear really, really bad things about Loki. Really I, bad things. I honestly haven't seen any reaction to it. Okay. Like positive or negative. I haven't seen like I've seen people say Tom Hiddleston is hot, but oh, it's... Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if the show is getting good or bad reviews. I I think it depends who you ask, right? I, I think if you get some very critical people of the Marvel movies, they're going to be pulling the thing apart. Mm. Um, but then you, I mean, you know, and I know that we really dislike those Marvel movies, and yet people really like, say, Ragnarok. And you and I can point out a load of issues with Ragnarok. Oh my god. One of my favorite YouTube videos I did, I, I watched, was a hour-long breakdown of how they fucked up Hulk. <laughs> In Ragnarok? Yeah. It was amazing. I was just like, I said all this, but no one's listening. Everyone no. watching your stupid video. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not wrong, mm. you know. Do you remember when the characters used to have personalities before Disney took over and they weren't just all the Guardians of the Galaxy? Um, I remember, it, basically, I think if Guardians hadn't worked as well, it you'd never have seen that. Yeah, no one would have became the same, yeah. basically. I think... Because uh, that's... That, that, yeah. That, I, think, I think that's where you and I went, oh no, here's a bathtub and all the Marvel movies are going to go into it. And that bathtub is called Bathos. Yep. And it's never going to leave that bathtub, no. ever. And then they try- <laughs> They did. Gar- I think for me, Guardians 2 was a breaking point because mm. they were basically trying to do the exact same thing they had with Guardians, except with more bathos. So, like, you had moments where someone's father dies, and hey, funny joke time. Because you yeah. can't feel. Like, they, they took that old that adage, um, J- uh, what's his name? Joss Whedon used to say. But like, make it serious, make it dark, and then for the love of God, tell a joke. And it's like, yeah, you fuck. You don't that need up. to do that all the time. You can, you can Some... let the emotion hang because yes. that's kind of important for you know, storytelling. If you're having a scene where someone is saying, "I will now kill myself for my adopted son who I ruined his life," <laughs> then you should not have a moment of going like, "Welcome to the Guardians of the what was it? Welcome to the freaking Guardians of the Galaxy." Only he didn't say freaking, and that almost worked. And then as he's flying away. He looks at Groot. Really have to do something about your language. And they were just like, "Oh for fuck's sake!" Yes. And that, that movie had such a good dramatic scene between Yondu and Rocket. Yeah, yeah, I adore that scene where Yondu just tears him down. Yep, I, like, I've seen that scene like ten, twelve, or that moment at the end where Rocket's like really lamenting like what they had in common and they didn't abandon him. Like that was good as well. But like. That's the really annoying thing about Guardians 2, isn't it? There's some really good bits in there that mm. they just undercut for some reason in the script. Yeah, and... and it's like, why? why? And then every Marvel movie tried to be that. 
yeah i you know what i want to do uh, i wanted to do it uh this week i want to go back through uh the the original movies of marvel uh, mm. up to avengers and then just stop <laughs> i kind of i kind of want to like no. even the bad ones even yeah. like captain america the first avenger i kind of want to rewatch to see like because it's changed a l- like dramatically oh, since I, I watched iron man not too long ago and it was such a weird experience it must be because I mean, obviously, that was the first movie, mm. and uh, it was it was the movie that made everybody go, "Oh wow, and, you can do a superhero film!" And it's got <laughs> humor and drama and pathos, and 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 it's just so tonally different. Mm. Like the because like the wacky stuff in there is there to show you that he is a man child. Yes, yeah, and it goes totally. away for the most part after he he comes back, uh, and then Iron Man two happened, but um. Do you know why Obadiah Sainz betrayed uh, uh, Tony in that movie, Mikey? There's a clear scene that no one talks about. The pizza? No, no, no. I'm thinking the pizza. Well, it's not the pizza. There is a scene where Tony comes back uh, and he says to Obadiah, Oh, Obadiah says, Oh, you got uh, McDonald's. Where's mine? And Tony does not (laughs) give him any. That, my friend, was the breaking point. Yeah. Right there, Obadiah Staines was willing to bring back his son into the fold, but Tony did not buy him a Big Mac. <laughs> and Ob Obadiah Staines rubbed his his lovely smooth forehead and said, "No, fuck that. No, he's <laughs> he's gotta die. You gotta lay the last golden egg." I like those lines from Obadiah Staines: "You lay the last golden egg." As he pulls out his uh, his heart. Yeah, <laughs> he's leaving like, oh god. Like, I, 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 of course, Obadiah started the awful, awful trend of. Villains not mattering, villain. but yeah. to be fair, it, they never thought knew if they were making a second movie. That yeah, I, yeah. I the the issue with I, all the Marvel movies is they killed off the villains too too readily. That's a huge way too problem. readily. It's it's okay in Thor because the villain was the Destroyer, so it's like that's a load of armor. You can you can rebuild that fine. Mm. Captain America, the Red Skull. Okay, fine. It doesn't matter if he goes because technically he goes in Earth's Mightiest Heroes and they cosmic cube him back. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing a story of, well, you can just say like, okay, Red Skull was then. Red Skull was mm, in the past. Yes. We don't have to deal with. Yeah, the past. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Man, you could have used Baron Zemo from the past, like in. Uh, you Earth's could Mightiest have. You could like, have just yeah. used Baron Zemo without making him a fucking parody of Baron Zemo. You could have. Oh, I don't. I don't know. It's, you, Baron Zemo looks silly, Mikey. <laughs> You know, I hate that excuse. I hate it because he's so cool. Yeah, Baron Zemo makes great. that weird look. He makes that really bizarre look work so well. Yeah, like, I don't know. Ba- I still Baron don't know if Zemo, he can transfer it into life though. It would be hard to transfer. There's ways of doing it, I'm sure. But mm, Baron sure. Zemo for me works in the same way Doom works. Just like mm, this is fucking ridiculous yeah. to look at, but this guy makes it work. Oh yeah, hundred. I, I agree, Doctor Doom man. God and man. hey, can we talk about Doctor Doom and Marvel adaptations? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what? Why? Oh, no. Why do they keep giving Fantastic Four to people who don't know how to make film? <laughs> to to be fair, the first two, like that one in Rise of the Silver Surfer, came out in a point where it was like, it, it was the spite. It was Spider Man Two, Spider Man Three era. Mm. So it's like they were just going weird, over the top, super yeah. duper, too much cartoon, not comic book, but cartoon cheese. movie style. Cheese, cheese, cheese super the, cheese. Yeah. Yeah, more cheese so they than went a too French far that way, and then but, obviously with fans four stick, it's just they were just keeping the license, and they gave it to someone who had issues. I and no fucking idea what he was doing with the product. No, I just you like know what's an, uh, my, they make clobbering time. Hey, <laughs> hey, he, my brother used to say it as he beat me, so now I'm going to say it before I beat you. Why was that a thing? Why? Why? How does that make it? So Ben Grimm is a deeply traumatized individual who's now passing that trauma on to others? <laughs> Ergo, Ben Grimm's an actual monster. It's also, like him in the Hulk of Best Friends. Everyone hates Reed. Yeah. Also, that whole film. Yeah, but I... <laughs> You know what? I'm not. I'm, also, I mean, the, I, also, this is this is a, like in the context of stuff like where 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 people's ca- uh, racial background is changed from the comics and everything else. Mm. It was really weird. You really proactively changed Johnny's race to African American, but you yeah. kept <laughs> you kept Sue white. You kept Sue no, very brother. like white, blonde, and blue eye. <laughs> yeah, just like could. I mean. I know you wanted to show, like, oh, they're from a racially diverse family, 
but we can't have a black woman be the main love interest and female protagonist of the film. That would be crazy. <laughs> I, I, I just don't think they should have tokenized, you know, those characters. If you were going with. to do it, just make, you know. Yeah, you may as well go all in. Make her black. Make her African. Make her whatever. Make her Chinese, Af- Jap- Japanese, Italian, French. I don't care. But if you're going to do it, just do it. Mm. Don't because that raised so many. I remember reading articles where just people said like, "This film tried to be racially, racially inclusive and then was accidentally racist." <laughs> 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 and like, I'm stupid with my language and everything else with that kind of stuff, and I freely admit it. But I, that movie was so like everyone hated everyone in that film. And that's before you get onto what they did to Doom. That that that's the thing. Like <laughs> at the very least, the even though we don't like the current Marvel movies, they are better than Fan Four Stick, which is just a train wreck. So, yeah. yeah, there you go. You know what? I'm. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to see it, but you know what? I think's disappointing. Mm. Past Master doesn't have a skull face. Oh yeah, I forgot what was going on with Taskmaster because I saw something about it and then completely ignored it. Yeah. Hang on. Listen, I'm disappointed that is a, not the movie it should be. Which, that's a movie you can go wacky on. Are you saying that the movie should just be called Taskmaster and it should just be based on the miniseries yes. where he fights the Dawn of the Dead? Where he fights... I'm 100% that. Uh, fights the Dawn of the Dead. He f- yes. He fights the Inquisition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> and as I said at the time, no, I really didn't. I really no, genuinely no, you didn't. No, you don't. Um... That's a movie that'll never happen. Where he ends up weird. fighting a village of Hitler. <laughs> 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 because Hitler's brain leaked into the water supply and turned everyone into Hitler. And then it has an incredibly tragic emotional ending. <laughs> oh, Mikey, you, you wondered like uh, what comic we should do for this month. Oh. The, the Fluff and Hammer. Do you think it's time that we talk about uh, Taskmaster? We could talk about Taskmaster. I think we should we, talk about we Taskmaster. Did, we did once years and years ago, but no one will have heard that. No, it's been a long time. And it, yeah, you know, let's do, I need let's an do, excuse to go back let's and read do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. This would be a good excuse. I reread it later last year. Let's do it. Let's do it. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Man, it, I haven't read it since oh, I originally read it. Sweet Jesus. Yeah. I, no, no, not there that. I go. just Googled Taskmaster. Oh, my God. Why is he wearing a ski mask? Yeah, because they can't do a skull face. But why does he have sunglasses? Silly, I guess. Why? It literally looks like he's going down a ski slope. He has the, sunglasses. The, he has ski glasses. The, the running, like, um, <laughs> like rumors and speculation is it's going to be Black Widow's sister as Taskmaster and not actually Taskmaster, Taskmaster. Uh, I thought Black Widow had come out. No, no, the movie Black Widow. Uh, no, it's not out yet. Okay. Um, and oddly enough, it's like pictured next to here is the Taskmaster from the Avengers game, which oh. looks like Taskmaster. Uh. <laughs> yeah but oh my god terrible game but... Ooh, don't get me started but uh oh my god um <laughs> i mean it would i think it'd be a bit weird if taskmaster was her sister because isn't her sister like the other widow yeah i think i think they're gonna do something like the sister or one of the other people that she works with like that we've seen in the trailer who hasn't been in a huge amount of the trailer mm. is probably going to have something to do with Taskmaster. That's the that's the theory whether I it's mean, an actual thing or not who knows. I could see them doing I, it. I will say honest, this but... definitely they will give him very little screen time and will kill him off. Taskmaster probably. Well, I mean it doesn't matter does it? No, cuz he'll be I you know I what it's going to be Taskmaster. like? It's going to be like um cuz I remember in um in some of the lead up to Winter Soldier, Batrock the Leaper got a lot of attention. All oh, right, okay. And I was just like, oh, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, oh, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. He'll he'll no, he'll show up in like two scenes. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. I heard back Batrock the Leaper was in, um, 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 Falcon Winter Soldier. Oh, cool. Well, actually, not a, a magic, not cool. a magic was... chair appeared out of nowhere, and it was used to uh, to beat him. I met what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's literally a scene where uh, Falcon kicks a chair at Batrock, mm-hmm. um, but it wasn't in the previous scene. So a magic chair just kind of appears for him to kick at him. Cool. Oh no, no! Uh, like Falcon throws the shield, and and uh, Batrock uses the chair, which magically appears from nowhere, and deflects Captain America's shield with the chair, which is hilarious in itself. Cool. Um. <laughs> Well, I suppose Falcon uh, can't throw it as hard. 
I just think it's funny. Captain America Shield. Which has vibranium. vibranium. I was going stop, to uh, just as you were, just you were saying that, I said like wait, vibranium. It's 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 like a folding chair, so I guess that makes a difference. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Are you telling me it's a common rider chair? No, no, no. <laughs> that would because that would have been chair. better. It was just those poor, <laughs> long suffering chairs from Common Rider. <laughs> that, that must be destroyed in every scene. <laughs> These cheap plastic chairs. <laughs> it happens, man. Oh dear. I also like the idea of a folding chair. All, the ultimate we- weakness of a vibra- vibranium: a chair that folds. It can stop anything, man. <laughs> Shield versus chair. There's a video. <laughs> yeah, Captain. Is this the one where they go? It's like a, a minute fourteen, right? Yeah. Oh god. They are, yeah. They they show the scene. I got. Oh, I want to no. watch this. We're getting a live reaction here. We're getting a live. Re- we never do this. We're getting. We we've, we've plenty of time. We're getting a live reaction. Yeah. Uh, when when it goes to Falcon Winter Soldier, watch Batrock and tell me where the chair comes from, Mikey. Okay. Bang bang. Carter shooting the shield. Okay. Shield a bit scuff, but it's like. Oh, Thor. Thor with the hammer. Mm-hmm. Shield. Yeah, from Avengers. Bam. Boom. Level the forest. Knocks Thor back. Cap still standing. Yep. Tank from Avengers 2. Bash it. Thor bashes the shield, uses it to turn it into a sonic boom. Uh, Fighting. Fight, fighting the Ultrons. Oh. Uh, taking out the big plane in uh, in Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. That's a good scene. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Bang bang! Oh, that was a, that, this was when I was like, oh my god, they're letting him throw the shield. <laughs> I remember them saying that in the film. <laughs> Falcon throws it. It bounces out of back rock. A chair. Oh my! It was... <laughs> <laughs> Where does the shield come from? Where's the chair come from, Mike? Perfect, perfect soundtrack put over it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mikey. The chair's just too strong. I can do that again. Hang on. Yeah, no, there was no... No, they brought in an extra chair. <laughs> Which is... But there were chairs there already. <laughs> Andy, there were chairs there already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, there's just one that magically appears in front of him. Out of nowhere. Why did they need to get more chairs? Did you know after after Falcon Winter Soldier, Batrock does not become the leaper anymore. He becomes the chair master. <laughs> I'm just lost. I can't stop. He throws and like, I mean, it bounces off of Batrock anyway. He blocks. He blocks the edge of the shield with his forearm. Yeah, like, not a good idea generally. No, again, when thrown by a superhuman, it cuts through most metals, and also it's a it's made of a metal that makes you bounce off it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, even if it's a, just a dude throwing that shield, that's not going to do good for your bones. No, because that's a focused bit of metal into your bones. <laughs> a and then a chair, the chair stops it. And it I really it, like the music that, they've added where it's just uh, ah. that must be near the end as well because he's in the full suit. Yep. Oh, yeah. Which, I, which is way too much white in it. I still don't like the the color spread on that version, but fine, fuck it. Uh, but yeah. oh man. <laughs> No, another weird scene from Captain Winter Soldier, uh, from uh, from oh, uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, the Captain Falcon thing, oh, is a helicopter is about to fall on Falcon, so he mm. wraps his wings around himself and the helicopter bounces off of him. What? What? Yeah. I thought you were about to say he wraps the wings around him and they form a shield. And then like, no, oh, no, like he, he survives. No, wraps... Oh no, he wraps his hang wings on, around himself on. and the helicopter bounces off Falcon of him. Falcon helicopter. Helicopter, uh, the, the Winter Soldier. A helicopter bounced off him. Yeah, yeah. Falcon helicopter scene. Uh, a Falcon, oh, no, that's sa- right Falcon save the plane. Falcon, Captain America. Falcon versus helicopters. It's uh, it's the canyon I battle. Think I'll need to. Uh, I've, I've, uh, if you, I'll, I'll grab uh, you the the time code it's... as well because it's uh. Oh, I'm this just, is just I'm weird, s- weird scenes. Okay, I've got Fal- it. I've he's got chasing it. squirrel people. It's um, it's a two minute. It's a, it's a longer clip. So okay, I'll need sure. to send it to give you. It, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. Falcon saves the helicopter. Uh, let me get you the time code as well. There you go. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Is that copy? Copy. <laughs> that chair <Yes>. killed me. 
<laughs> it's good, isn't it? It's really funny because you don't suspect it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, da da. <laughs> Oh, he does use the shield, but still. Let's see, let's see. Like, no, that won't work because the shield versus the chair. Andy? Oh, that's true. Okay, that's so. true. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> do, do you see why some people might have said uh, it's not a good series? <laughs> he doesn't even move. No, the 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 why plane, did he uh, the helicopter what did the bounces wings off. Do? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. People are like, no, it's a really good show. It's like, is it? Oh, my heart. Why is he doing a spin? Why are you now doing a spin? I don't know. Oh, God, I've got it on replay. No, I don't. He bounced it off a helicopter. After yep. He bounced... I mean, good, good coordination. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you think, don't it? <laughs> All right. Oh, my heart. <laughs> Mikey, where can people find you on the internet? Maybe you should oh, watch Falcon Winter Soldier, by thank the way. You, it might make you laugh. Oh, <laughs> Bing! <laughs> <laughs> You'll never um, look at the chair the same way again in a Marvel movie. Mm. Um, you can find me on Twitter as Irish Paleo, and you can send us messages over on Moonbase Two at Gmail dot com and Facebook and Lipson and everywhere else. And you can... <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> <sighs> well, I've made you happy. Oh, my waveform. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, what about you? Oh, I got a mute. You can. F- you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr, CCTFW, on YouTube as Cobra Commander TFW. You can find this podcast on the Moonbase 2 forums, on Twitter, iTunes, Facebook, Libsyn, and YouTube as Moonbase 2 Transformers Podcast. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, you can go over to patreon.com slash moonbase2, and if you do $2 each month, you get the extended of From the Files of Teletron 2, and you also get the Moonbase Woo Woo, where we talk about non transformery things in more detail. Uh, oh, I'm on Twitch as well as CCTFW, where I stream video games and whatnot from 11 o'clock in the evening UK time till about uh, half one in the morning UK time. So if you want, you can come and uh, watch me do things. Oh, you don't have to. Oh, well, so ccbunker.weebly.com as well. Uh, and that's us done. Uh, I have broken Mikey, which I'm very happy about. Chairs, dangerous in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Never forget. Uh, and until next time, everybody, thank you very much for coming on by. And we will see you suckers next time. You are now leaving Moonbase 2.